So you've kind of given away my first line there, Tom, because I was going to say, and I'll still say it, my work colleagues are hairy. <laughs> they like to buck and bite and fart a lot. They love to roll around in the mud quite a lot. Um, they have four legs. Um, and of course, they're horses, so <laughs> thank you. Um, <laughs> so, so the work that I do, I, I've been very um, uh, honored, really, by working with these remarkable creatures. And I'm sorry, I won't have enough time today to share a lot about how they work, how they do the work, and, and the sort of the, the science behind that. Um, but I also work with a, a number of other human beings, and, and we've developed um, and pioneered a, pro, uh, a methodology called Equine Facilitated Human Development and Learning. So as Tom said, I work with um, individuals and groups for both personal and professional developments. And so the sessions can be from anything for a couple of hours to longer programs. And in fact, um, I've also pioneered uh, the first degree and master's training program in this work as well. So a lot of the students that come onto our training program are from professional backgrounds in education um, or therapists uh, or working with children as well. So we do a lot of work training people up to use this work with horses for other walks of life too. So why horses? What is it about horses um, that is relevant to um, the Meaning Conference and some of the key themes we've been exploring. We've been ex looking at the like, concepts of ins inspiration, inspiring ourselves to inspire others. We've been looking at the idea around connection, connection within ourselves. We've been, uh, the, the Levies have been helping us really understand about interconnection. And when we have that internal connection with ourselves through mindfulness practices, then we can have connection with each other. We can have meaningful conversations and relationships. And then through that process of change that we undergo ourselves, we can lead change for others too. And so what is it about horses that make them, in my mind, Zen masters at helping us get better at that? Well, horses act like a mirror. And what's really, really important here um, well, there's a couple of things. Animals and children, they don't have polite manners. So they're quite honest and, and direct with their feedback. <laughs> they don't hold back. What horses particularly do um, is that when we're lost in our thoughts and we're thinking what we're doing, they think we are absolutely boring, unimportant, uninteresting. In fact, a pile of horse poo is much more interesting than us. And what often we do as humans is we have lots of thoughts, we're so much in our heads, and we forget that we actually have a physical body that has physical experiences. And God forbid, we also have emotions, and most of us just don't want to go there. But the only thing that horses can see and will respond to is what's going on in our physical bodies and in our emotional uh, well-being. They absolutely are disinterested in us when we're in a thinking. And if we look at that and how we act in life, we often see people being incongruent. I often um, see myself being incongruent, or I'm thinking one thing, but I'm acting and doing something else because often my emotional well-being is driving my behaviors, and that's what's really happening in the room. Yeah, I'm talking over here and saying this and thinking this, and, and it's so disconnected. And many of us uh, find ourselves in those situations, being like that. Well, horses just give us direct feedback. Basically, they're not interested when we're just lost in our heads. But if we start connecting through mindfulness-type te techniques through our whole body system, then they're mesmerized. They're completely engaged by us. It's as though we've suddenly switched a light bulb on, and they literally will turn and just look at us and go, wow, you're cool. I want to be with you. What can we do together? And, the, and the, the translation here is actually that's what's happening with our other human beings as well. That we, when we show up fully present, others can feel us. We can feel them. There's a feeling feltness. There's a whole neuroscience uh, piece around that about relational connectivity, often through the limbic system. 
So it's a very tangible thing. It's a very energetic experience that we experience when we're present fully in ourselves. And in fact, it engages others to be engaged in us. So what I basically teach amongst <laughs> this is a fundamental piece that I teach is how do we align our thinking with what we're physically feeling and what we're emotionally feeling? And because when we do that, we are confident, we are calm. I'm trying very hard to stay physically feeling, emotionally feeling, and thinking at the same time right now, being aware of my feet at the same time. And we become much more congruent. People believe in us. We can carry a team forward with us when we're in that state. There's a lovely uh, neuroscientist who I greatly respect, um, Antonio uh, Damasio. And he says, um, we are not thinking machines that feel. Rather, we are feeling sentient beings that think. So we really do, in, in the neuroscience world, experience the world first through this way. But often, I'd say, most of us would say we've experienced the world down. We're not so aware of our bodies. So how might this look? So I'm just going to give you a little, um, a, a little taste of what um, you might experience if you were working with the horses. So I might just say to you, so just right now, all of you, notice how physically your head is feeling. Now notice physically what you're experiencing in your chest. What physical sensations do you experience in your chest? Now notice what ex physical ex sensations, what phys what's the physical experience going on in your belly, or what we would call the hara, the dantian. How do your feet feel right now physically? Stay being aware of all those physical sensations. And now imagine you're leading a horse around without touching it or speaking to it, without a lead line, or a team of people, whilst being able to feel all these three centers what we call centers of intelligence all the way through, all at the same time. And that's mastery, to be able to stay physically present to our physical feelings and emotional feelings whilst thinking. And when we're like that, the horse is engaged, completely engaged. So we can train ourselves to notice what takes us out and what keeps us there. So I hope I've exp exp explained that enough. <laughs> it's quite complicated sometimes for me to say it. I find it complicated. So finally, just a little a backstory on me. Um, I have a military background. I was, my father was military, my husband was, and I, I too served as a soldier. Um, so I have a lot of um, connection with uh, many of the veterans coming back, I'm a veteran myself, with uh, PTSD and trauma um, issues, and often some of the biggest issues that many veterans face is making that transition back from one culture, a military culture, into civilian life. They're trained to, to be different to where we are, um, and the languaging and the way of living and being is often quite different. And so I started to get very interested in this and started training as a PTSD therapist. Um, and discovered that the horses were very helpful at preparing people to get ready for PTSD treatment. So I've pioneered a program for veterans, and we also use it for young offenders and disaffected youth. We've worked with, with gang members as well, um, to really help them get more, teach them these, these mindfulness skills, which is actually what we're needing to learn as well. Um, and I just have a very short um, video, because I founded a charity called Dare to Live, and I have a video of one of um, the veterans that I worked with a, a few years ago who has now gone through that process. He's used those tools. He's used those learnings. He's used that experience of being mindful to get to where he is now. So I hope you can be inspired by this extraordinary story and um, continue learning and practicing and doing the things you've been learning today. Thank you very much. So how did I find myself afraid to walk on grass? It essentially goes back to my service in the military. I had to search for IEDs, improvised explosive devices. We had to search for devices in long grass. The years later, I was walking my dog and found myself in the middle of a field and froze completely. Something made me flash back to, to my time in Bosnia. And I had to call my wife to come and rescue me from this field, which is just unbelievable. Joined the army when I was 16 and trained as a combat engineer. 
found myself in Northern Ireland on two tours where I took part in over 100 clearance operations where it was my job to find homemade bombs. And when I was 18 on my first tour in Northern Ireland, I witnessed a horrific incident where I saw six soldiers climbing into a van which blew up in front of me. Later on, I served with the bomb disposal teams in Bosnia where I was injured and I was medically discharged from the army. And soon after I became a civilian, I realised that the the biggest battle lay ahead. Within 18 months I was divorced, I was drinking too much, I didn't fit in with people and I, and I lost my job and I kind of knew that there was something wrong but I didn't know what. I thought PTSD only happened to World War I vets in the trenches and Vietnam vets, you know, off the TV. So to be told I had PTSD was a, a bit of a shock and I explored lots and lots of different therapies. None of them really worked until I was introduced to Dare to Live and the Horses here which has uh, transformed my life. The first horse I was introduced to was Coley. Within seconds, we connected on a level I've never experienced before. My body felt really calm, my stomach was untwisted. There wasn't that anxiety and the thought process that would bring on flashbacks. And before I knew it, I was so immersed with working with Coley that I found myself up to my knees in grass, which was astonishing. But I never felt any fear. It was just me and him in the moment and everything else was safe around me. I've learned to communicate with horses quite well, which has surprisingly brought me from being a squatty to being a horse whisperer, which brings me an immense amount of joy. And I definitely am not scared to walk on the grass anymore. And it's allowing me to help other veterans. What more could you want? <laughs>